Walter and Bjergsen, something we will be watching, as well as what's going to happen in this top lane. Zion Spartan using that Riven after the changes here in the 4.1 patch. I'm kind of interested to see how this matchup fares. Yeah, a lot of her ratios have changed around from bonus attack damage to total attack damage. The changes are scaling a little bit. Supposed to separate the good Riven players from the, uh, from the not so good ones. Oh. You see the odd one rocking a ward to start off here. They're going to favor a bit of vision early in the game. Or a bit more vision, if you will. Yeah. You very rarely see the odd one going with a ward right off the bat. Elise, of course, can sustain spectacularly in the jungle with all of her spider links. Fastest attack speed at level one. This is really what early game is all about. Dancing. Yeah. You gotta find the right taunt to make dance moves. You gonna dance with a shadow now? Look at that. Damn. He's not even looking at his screen. He looked over to the other side. He can do it without Shifter looking. Shifter could have harassed him there. Missing out on opportunities. Second game of the day, BM already? No. These guys know. First oh. damage. Well, right. TSM has the lead. Let's see what they can do with it. I think they're going to look to get some early pressure off that damage. Mm, absolutely. Anyway, that actually says that the odd one's starting at his red buff. That means Nintendo Dex is most likely starting at blue. Uh, standard lanes all around, but the, the bottom lane will have to be on high alert yeah. because both junglers are trending directly towards that. This also tells Dyrus and Zion Spartan they basically get some alone time together and they can fight. <laughs> didn't mean it like that. They're just 1v1 in the top lane. Well, Zion Spartan has started that uh, sword, so it looks like he could go into the Brutalizer right quickly, as we did see Urgot do last game on Yellow Pete. It's a level 1 Zenith Blade, and already was Fusion and Dreamin trying to put the pain down. Hey, they got a little bit of early harass. They're trying not to get shoved out right at the start of the game. They know early level 2 in this lane matchup is of utmost importance. So making sure to get rid of that X special stun right away so they can't yep. use it for kill pressure later. Got to get minion number seven. That first minion of the second wave is all it needs. Bjergsen and Chipter nicely dodging each other there. Looks like odd one. That's always his path. He roams towards mid. It kind of, if there's a chance of a gank, mm. he's there. He's always there for a yeah. counter gank. Getting this ward in. Not going for Nintendo Dex. And it looks like they are going to be downside. Maybe we'll see him in the bottom half of the jungle. They're actually going quite slow on their paths right now. Yeah, I mean, there's no rush right. at the start of the game here. They're, they're making sure that they would be there for some counter ganks. You can see uh, Nintendo took an extra camp over Odd One. Mm -hmm. Right. No These guys works. in the mid lane, they're, they're good. I'm really looking forward to this matchup. There's a lot of juking that can be pulled off with both Zed and Katarina. Outplay champions are my favorite. Never straightforward and always get out of a slippery situation. Like you said, Bjergsen showed us that with his LeBlanc, with his Zed. The shadow movement and clone movement is very big in his skill set. Right now, the bottom lane, WizFusion has been forced to pop that potion. See if Wild Turtle takes more advantage and starts putting the pain down, since there's no sustain down here. Yeah, well, Nintendo is going to walk right through Ward if he goes for this. It's a... Zenith play the lands. Let's see if they can force something. Still got it. Special with the stun. How is he going to use it? He has to flash oh. the flame choppers. Tries to get the double undertow, but they take quite a bit of damage on this. Nintendo's forced to back up. I feel like if Nintendo landed that axe on Annie, it would have been a kill because that was a post flash axe. And even though he took a lot of damage later, the burst would have been there for them. So it burns a flash despite being a ward, mainly because of Daydreaming's nice Zenith blade. And this will kind of help out the odd one now. He knows a bit of pressure is relieved off that first gank. So he's. Kind of just hanging out in his jungle. We may not see him for the next few, well, not seconds, but he's going to farm up. Yeah. None of his lanes need his help right now, and his first counter gank like opportunity is gone because mm -hmm. he didn't counter gank the first thing. <laughs> uh, he's going to go, go back figure. and get that spirit stone, I believe. Make it so he no longer has to worry about any type of damage in the jungle. At least heals so much once he gets that new spirit stone, along with her already heavy lifesteal from the spider wing. It looks like that longsword went quickly into this Vampire Acceptor. So Zion Spartan can get close to Dyrus here, but he's also picked up that vision as he fears he's going to be a target. Mm. They don't really know where Odd One's going. He's, even though he can't for Bjergs in one game, another game he ganks other lanes entirely. He's one of the better junglers at remaining unpredictable in the current season. Trying to get a push on Bjergs in here. He's using the Sinister Blade to get a good pressure on the wave. Zion Spartan in the face of Dyrus, so he's just waiting for the next minion wave to come up. But these guys, pretty much even, 30 all CS. 
Yeah, that top lane will be interesting to see if Zion Spartan can reach damage before Dyrus just starts stacking armor. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be a very powerful lane for Dyrus. Mundo being able to survive the early game is almost never a good thing for the enemy team, especially when Shifter is looking to play uh, Katarina, yeah. relies heavily on resets, and obviously with Fusion does as well with Jinx. Here's another one from Nintendo, focusing the mid lane, and it's actually going to be for the counter gank on the odd one, who just feels it. The Spidey sense is all they need. Yeah, Bjergsen able to outfarm Shifter a little bit here. Katarina definitely not that strong early on farm wise, so this is an expected result thus far. Shifter just trying to survive to the point where he can become a roamer, and then he's going to be looking to make plays from there. The odd one's already been to, or the odd one rather, Nintendo dude has already been to his lane a few times, so once he does get to that roaming point, it'll be easier mm -hmm. and they're not going to be behind. Let's see if it works out. The level six has come in and he goes instantly for the ultimate, but it's going to be the death mark back on a shifter. He has the damage, he has the victory in the 1v1. First blood, Bjergsen. Fancy moves right there. That is the reason TSM picked up Bjergsen from Europe right there. First blood in a 1v1. Shifter thought he had it calculated, Bjergsen had it calculated a little bit better. And that's really huge for him in that 1v1 matchup. Yeah, I think the Dorn's blade to that Dorn shield start, he knew what he was doing. And he actually goes for more damage, the Quick Brutalizer, for the Long Sword after, and the Scepter most likely. The Seeker's Arm Guard has to be bought up, and Shifter knows it. Yeah. Katarina going for a very early Zanyas. Maybe, maybe not. Just going for just a little bit of extra it. armor. There's a chance he'll just piece this together. Because he wants the damage for roaming. He often goes with Glass Cannon type builds. Back down to the bottom lane. We have special is most Annie starting out with that Doran's ring, but they haven't really been able to use that power. Wiz Fusion going early with Daydreaming in that lane. We see Zion Spartan He's still able to out harass Dyrus a little bit, but he knows once that combo's over, he can always get his attack back as well. Yeah, Zion Spartan using his Vamps to sustain. Dyrus has to use his ult to sustain. Uh, whenever Zion Spartan can keep the ult on cooldown, mm. It actually really diminishes the effect of a Dyrus teleport. He wouldn't be able to chase once he teleports down. So Zion Spartan, I'd say, is doing well to keep Dyrus down. Odd one has been quiet this game. Yeah. He's only... Odd one generally only acts up when he needs to, you know? Uh, none of these lanes all rowdy. have needed too much help. Bjergsen is fine 1v1. Mm. Ganking a Riven with a Mundo doesn't really work. And their bot lane has been quite fine on its own, just because Wild Turtleneck Special have generally stayed fairly well pushed up. Odd One done well to farm thus far, and they're hoping to get some kind of counter here. They're expecting Daydream and Infusion to go in as soon as they hit level 6, and Odd One wants to be there for the counter. Pretty sure they saw him on that last yeah. melee minion, but it was just to get the lane pushed as well. We are going to have backing from the bottom lane. They need to get some items in, but the Odd One's is known where he is on the map, rather, for Coast. So Shadow's down it. for Bjergsen. Yep, Nintendo's going to use that to his advantage. They know the odd one can come from the bottom side, so they're careful about this engagement. Really just trying to shove out the lane together right there. You can see that Kink had very low chance of success, even with the Shadow down. They still have to land more. That's a nice stun, though. Very nice hit on a Nintendo. We see Wiz or Shifter rather coming down. 300 HP the last few hits. Shifter couldn't even react in time. Is that a blue Vizela right there? Yeah. LCS right here, North America. This is big stuff. That was a <laughs> nice gank by the odd one. Got the Coast shadow! is out of sorts right here. Woo! That shadow's not moving anywhere. It's not going anywhere. No, really, it though. It should have disappeared. Odd That's one and Bjergsen are completely ahead of them right now. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. as well as gameplay-wise. Just completely ruining Nintendo. He burned his ghost and his ultimate there. Didn't even save his life. It's been... Something they've, they've been setting up. Nintendo has only gone mid, and Odd One, that was his first choice for a gank besides what didn't work out at bottom. He's been planning this. Odd One, biding his time. Yeah, he's just waiting, waiting to get that. Spun yeah. him up in the web, and he took him down. His kill and Bjergsen's kill, so those two that actually really have good mentality on the team to keep everybody up and moving, already doing well. So that's only going to help even more. The BF sword onto Wild Turtle, Yep. not bad at all. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of big damage. He might be going for the Bloodthirster early, but you can see he's only building the damage components right now. This really tells you that he hasn't been harassed almost at all in this lane. He hasn't had to go for Vamps mm -hmm. because he doesn't care about the sustain. That looks like Dyrus is winning that. 
Zion Spartan leaving the lane with about five, six hundred HP, and Dyrus is just going to happily push this one up. His teleport is still up, but he chooses to just back here. Yep, it had been a while since those guys had shopped. Dyrus taking his first trip of the day, picks up a whole bunch of armor. Armor. Wow. Health, wards, boots. A whole bunch I think of he just took out a loan. Zion Spartan, though, finished off his Tiamat, so he's going to try and counter shove at Dyrus. That lane is really just going to be about Zion farming, because Zion wants to become strong enough to become a split push force. Coast doesn't necessarily win in the ways other teams do. TSM flexing their muscles here in front of Coast, the undertow, and the rocket just flying right by. TSM is actually trying to play an incredibly controlled game here. I think it's their strategy against Coast, since the way Coast has won games is either Zion Spartan gets really fed, like on Nasus, and starts drawing two or three people over to himself. Or Shifter starts roaming a whole bunch and creates skills that way. But if TSM just plays controlled, keeps the objective mm -hmm. game up, uh, doesn't overcommit anywhere, it doesn't leave many opportunities for Shifter to roam. And since they do trust in Dyrus, they're just expecting him to keep Zion Spartan down. It's really forcing Wiz Fusion and Daedra to do something, and they haven't shown that they're capable of it yet this split. Well, last time we saw Zion Spartan on Riven, I remember the game he came back from graduation, and he played exceptionally. You know, Riven still has these Everyone changes, but he's evened out in the mid lane. It looks like they may get an assist onto this one. He goes ahead and forces the flash first, leaving his shadows up. Surprising that Zion Spartan would pop his ultimate before even getting a damage rate. Now when he goes back to the top lane, Dyrus is going to know that he can beat him in a 1v1. That's why he's trying to head him off here. The ultimate is down. I'm not going to really have any wind slash left to use there and it wouldn't do much to Dyrus but he knows he can start harassing this lane even more like you said HP the armor he's gonna start doing some pain to Zion and TSM in complete control we can see you know the only two times Coast has actually taken games against TSM was in the finals of the spring split it was a 3-2 best mm -hmm. of five regular season 8-0 for TSM it has been total domination here and Zion He's going to have to worry about getting dope here. No ultimate, so he can't counterattack. Let's see TSM work. TSM has vision all over the map, so they can do dangerous things like this. And it looks like they may be a little too far off to get the kill, but they have the lane pressure. They burned the flash. They got Zan mm -hmm. Spartan out of there. And if they want, they can just take down this turret. Odd One is actually rotated to hold that lane. And it was actually Yerkson who does first roam. This will be going down in their favor, and that will be the first structure of the map. They've already grabbed a 3,000 gold lead, Jack. 12 minutes in. Definitely one of the more controlled TSM games. Yeah. Every lane doing its job to do well right now. And that makes Rome much more difficult. But because there is a Bjergsen Rome top, TSM needs to be heady of where Shifter goes. He is a sneaky person right now, and currently they're looking to plant a turret dive. Daydream is going to try and get on here, but Dyrus is teleporting from the back. There's the flash in from Annie, and the Timbers on a Wiz Fusion. A good hit from Dyrus. He doesn't actually get an assist on the briefcase, unfortunately. But they're going to keep going for the fight here. No, it's Turtle. Great barrier. Trying to get in. Oh, very nicely done. And they're going for Shifter still, taking him down on that as well. Three have gone down. Nintendo found by Odwin as they go through Tribrush. He was a little late to the party, and Odwin was there to stop him. TSM predicted that gank just perfectly. Shifter had to come in from behind the turret, and TSM initiated first. It meant Dyrus got to fight a 2v3, and then Shifter was late. He could not get resets, and it was a clean sweep for TSM there. This is perfect for Dyrus to be out of his lane as well. Zion Spartans in mid. Let's just take another look at this initiation. Yeah, Daydream and thought this would have been good until Mundo survived, or arrived. Even right. if, even if they would have lost his fusion, Shifter generally would have been able to win that fight if Dyrus wasn't there to stop them. Great stunts by X Special throughout. Wild Turtle waited just the right moment for the barriers so Shifter would commit fully, and it turned everything around. The Rome failed for Shifter and worked for Bjergsen. That just makes it even harder for Coast. The things they are trying to put into motion are being stopped dead in their tracks right now as TSM's doing it one step faster. The 3,000 gold lead now to four. Uh, five, actually, and it's two turrets now for TSM. Yeah, this is going to be a tall order if Coast wants to come back. Mm. This is this is looking like one of those quick TSM victories right now. Zion Spartan did finish his Ravenous Hydra. Oh, dear. But it's a finished Sunfire Cape on Dyrus. Pops his ultimate just to try and scare him off. So it doesn't look like Zion's going to be taken over anytime soon. No one else on Coast is doing well either. 
Shifter really not able to get even farm in now that his lane has been kind of mushed up with everything that's been happening. He's down 30 CS now. Bjergsen, he's all already in the 1v1s trying to get people to fight him here on split pushing. Zed can transition into a strong split pusher here. And as long as TSM wards well, they will continue to keep Katarina out of this game. Bjergsen got a substantial lead on Shifter, 149 to 109. You can see 1,800 gold as well, while still nearly taking down his turret. Definitely round one here to TSM's entire team, every lane. Yep, even in the jungle, Odd One sits 1,000 gold above Nintendo Dex right now, and he hasn't spent that gold. A lot of it is sitting in his pocket because he has been roaming. So we'll see what they produce with their next bit of movement. 45 seconds on the Dragon Jet, and they still have that covered with a bunch of wards. Looks like TSM will want to take that dragon soundly. Dyrus will have to make sure to rotate down. Uh, Coach is really hoping to find a rotation where they can get some type of five on three or outnumbered fight because if they try and fight 5v5, they are going to no. get completely wrecked. Absolutely, and everything that TSM is doing is just falling into place. The mid turret drops there. They're possibly able to drop dragon right after this. The gold is just coming in bursts for them. There's a chance this is going to be one of those starve out games like we saw when right. COG took out Curse. That was a much lower kill game. This is just like the objectives with the kills as well, so it might happen even faster. Oh, Nintendo's got to be so careful. <laughs> Bjergsen says, I can get the kill, I want it. Goes a little too early, but they still have everything they need to get this dragon. 17 minutes on Goodbye. the clock, and it looks like Nintendo won't make it out of this one alive, but they know the threat from Bjergsen is down now, so they can watch dragon get taken down. They can't go for it, though. Yeah. That's scary. That is just 8,000 gold. Now, they wanted to flash that wall, but X-Special didn't have his flash up. I think he was calling the initiation. You can see <laughs> he ran up to the wall the way that he wanted to flash over it. Uh, but he could not make it there. They still might look to turret dive, get counter-initiated on. Yeah. Coast would not be able to follow that up. They want an X-Special there. His flash is not up just yet. So it's going to have to be a walk-in Tibbers initiation if they do go for it. Without Mundo here, though, diving would be a little scary. Yeah, but look how much damage they're getting on the turret nonetheless. Knowing yep. that Leona ult is down, so the initiation isn't necessarily going to work. They know they are extremely far ahead. Uh, there's over a thousand gold on everyone but X Special right now for the shop trip. Meaning, it's time to go back, buy some goodies, and continue to dominate. This is an extremely one-sided game. And it's, it's getting harder for Shifter being one of the key players, a part of the featured matchup we're looking at today. He can't even build damage. The Death Lotus on his ultimate, you almost have time to just walk out of it before it really does that much damage. Yep. No burst yet on Shifter. Katarina falling behind at this stage in the game is, is very bad. Uh, also, the fact that the Aedas of Legion was somewhat rushed by the Odd One. A lot of times you will see Elises go for a Haunting Guys and more mm -hmm. Magic Penetration. But this time, just since there's a Magic Resist Aura, it diminishes Shifter's chance at resets even more. Briggs is going to have to pull some tricky plays here. Let's see what he's got. Oh, he's not going to put it by him. Whoop. There he goes on the other way. And that's no crowd control that can keep him in place. That was too easy for him. That really. was too easy. They Someone, are someone's got to stick by the shadow. <laughs> but they were too afraid to split up and let... Yurks and ult and kill one of them, oh. that they had to stick together, and that just meant Yurks gets away from free. That goes over to Nintendo, dude, unless Bjergsen gets it somehow. I think he's got the range on it, so they're safe on that. The ward's already placed, so they knew they were going for the blue buff. TSM continues to keep those wards up, still to at least one pink ward has always been on the dragon this game. And another thing to note about this TSM domination so far is it's a individual team effort, and I'll explain that in the sense that no one has been a part of more than three kills or assists, but they have six overall. Normally, like, your average kill participation for a player is around 70%, mm -hmm. but since TSM is all sitting at 50 right now, that means they've been individually winning fights without many assists. Everyone on TSM is winning their individual matchup. And we can see Coast trying to push those individual winners out of there and, and jungle themselves. Bjergsen... Always giving somebody hassle. It looks like he doesn't have any wards on him. He has placed the trinket, so he's going to be able to be safe. That vision at the top side of the jungle. But the 8,000 gold lead allows them to play, will you say, a little bit careless now? They aren't, but they can yeah. take chances. They're playing controlled, but it means they can... It means they can do things that seem dumb. Like, if, if 
if Dyrus wants to completely turret dive, he can right. because he's just that much stronger than Zion Spartan right now. If they want to force a Baron and get themselves low and then peel at low health, oh God. they can do that as well. Oh, that was a bad choice, Zion. That was a bad choice. That might happen right now, Chad, if he wants to dive that turret. Oh, come on, dive he's the turret. He's really respecting <laughs> Zion's burst right now. He got ignited. He's waiting for that to burn off. It was close. You gonna go? No. Too much shield. Some nice lifesteal coming in from the Hydra for Zion there as well. Healthy. I'm a little sad that Dyrus didn't dive, but another day he stays okay. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> he gave he gave that one to me. He said I'll dive a little bit. Take a few turret shots just because he can. <laughs> the Zanya's almost finished on the shifter. Really don't know how much it's gonna help, but really at this point it prevents his death. He's still not killing people. For about two and a half seconds, yeah. it'll prevent his death. And then it will exactly. swiftly be met once again. Lowest deaths in the LCS as well, adding two to that list right now. Not the best game for Shifter. Really, the fact that he all in at level 6 and lost uh, set him completely behind. I think soon enough we're going to see TSM get the ward control over this Baron and take it. Surprisingly, Coast, because they're so far behind, is just playing extremely conservatively. It's one thing I actually respect about some teams who lose games quickly, is they realize they're incredibly far behind. So they just take risks and that usually just means they die a whole bunch of these earlier. Coast isn't taking many risks here, and it's bleeding them out of the game. They have to go in for a fight at Baron here, because that's the risk TSM is daring them to fight. Nintendo has the Ragnarok, but they don't go towards Baron, and Baron's not even taken to the engagement. Flashing over the wall, there's oh. the death load, and Shifter grabs Shifter. one! Shifter grabs two! Can he keep going? Shifter goes down, it's going to be 30 seconds on the timers now, but he came out of nowhere with that. Okay. That's one way to do it. Let's take another look at how this happens. So even though TSM feels like they have a clean initiation, everyone on TSM balls up. Look at this. All five people are taking damage from that death load. And once Shifter gets a reset, he's spamming Q and W as fast as possible. It's nearly an instant cast. Holy crap, that was a lot of damage from Katarina. Absolutely amazing. Shifter turns everybody on their heads that fight. We were saying he's not going to have an impact, but he has put himself in the right position. He shouldn't have had an impact. TSM... I said they could do, like, foolish things because they were so far ahead. Yeah. If there were, like, three of them in a ball, it would have been fine. Just not your entire team as Katarina is getting reset kills. That was absurd. See what TSM can fight back with after being finally put back to their base. They had quite a bit of gold on them from just knowing they could stay out. The Black Cleaver finally coming in for Bjergsen, so he's going to hurt that much more. Yeah. And it looks like both junglers going back to favoring the lock of the Iron Solari. Yeah, absolutely. That's a key item for both these guys in this game. Obviously, Nintendo on the tank a lot. Just being tanky. Odd one trying to prevent what happened to his team in that last fight when Shifter bounced all around. He didn't really bounce anywhere. He just stood in a very small area and used all his buttons over and over again. <laughs> but... It sure looked cool. It looked amazing. The thing about this is TSM was so catastrophically far ahead that even though Coast did win one of their risky plays, they let it get to a point where that's not nearly enough. Uh, all right, yeah. yeah. They didn't get much after it. They won the fight. Then that, granted, they're happy with they that. They won the fight. They actually took a, ca a casualty amongst it, or mm -hmm, two. Mm -hmm. TSM had to fall back, and then TSM took a dragon. So the gold lead is only about 2,000 worse. Uh, Coast came back about 2,000 gold, all said. But there's still 8,000 in the... Oh, and that's not good. It's been four to two in turrets. TSM may be ahead, but they're having a little trouble finding the way to the next turret here. Still looking to see if they can push back on Zion Spartan in the top lane. Shifter, or rather Bjergsen, hasn't really gone back to split pushing too much. He's been with the team more now. I actually feel like Bjergsen should probably do a little bit more split pushing. Uh, seeing as Zion Spartan itemized in Negatron Club. It means since he is the split push opposition nice. right now. That was a nice dodge. Uh, since he is the opposition right now, that Bjergsen would be able to just finish him off. So without Nintendo, really the one wanting that blue, I guess it could go to Wiz Fusion for some zaps, but the wave clear here not really in their favor. It's not exactly huge siege potential coming out of Team Solomid, and maybe that's why it's kind of all coming to a halt here. Well, they were hoping that that last fight would win them, win them the game. It just ended up delaying it right This is also Spartan. a little different as well. Darius is going to hope to turn this if Zion gets too far out since he's a little bit out of damage. 
He's going to heal up and just continue to be annoying in that lane. Looks like it might be that Void Staff coming out instantly after the penetration, being built up for Shifter. He's getting pretty close. No matter, he had a very hard time in the beginning of the game, and he's kept himself up in kills here without too much help from Nintendo to flash Ooh. on, but he gets hit with the cleaver right on, sticking with the shield dash, sticking with the dashes, and the W kill coming up for Zion Spartan. Dyer is definitely being a little dangerous here. Bjergsen now trying to split push on the other side because the rest of TSM trying to stop Zion Spartan. Oh, oh dear. No way. Just missing him with that skill right there. A pixel away. We'll see what kind of damage he has. The lock into the iron. Solari bursts oh. right up, and it's good enough from the death mark, and Bjergsen slips out a lot. Not a good game for Nintendo Dex right there. Bjergsen did have to pop his death mark over here, and the stall continues for Coast. Yeah. Even though Nintendo got picked off, Zion, if he could start beating Dyrus in 1v1s, that just completely changes the complexion of this game. Got a little scary after that, and Zion Spartan actually smart. built up the Quicksilver Sash for himself. Now we're looking at the Baron. Yeah, let's we'll see what they Jungler can do. Jungler dead, teleport up, 5v4. This could be the game if they peel off for a good initiation. Where are they going to go with this one? The locket has already been used, so they save the initial damage from Baron. Zion Spartan comes in, and he is quite a factor of DPS. Where's Katarina? We gotta watch for this. He's coming in from behind. He's Katarina very low, coming though. Coming in from the blue buff area. Shifter down to 50% HP. The smite goes to the odd one, but he is very low. So is Bjergsen. The DPS is out of the fight. They're zoning out Fusion. He is way out of mana. Gonna go down in this instance, and they may even able to attack Shifter. Really touchy, touch and go smite there by Odd One. He was low, which is why it was a little bit dangerous, but they controlled the way Coast was coming in. There was almost no danger of a steal as long as Odd One was alive. No smite alive for Coast. They secure the Baron. That'll give him the strength to maybe push through. Dangerous thing, though. Coast forced them into a risk. Bring him back as we see Bjergsen here, that mid lane matchup, a future matchup of the day. Bjergsen's 258 to 169. The early freedom has given him a run in this game. Look at that goal, 4,000 up yeah. on Shifter right now. That That's also because Zed has just been farming so much more and Shifter hasn't been able to get into lanes where he can farm. Right. Uh, they've been giving most of that farm over to Wiz Fusion on Jinx, actually who's also behind Wild Turtle, by the way. TSM, like we said earlier, won every lane, and it's showing heavily in their front. Coast has some scary picks coming out of Champion Select. Like we said, they really needed to do well early game, but they're fending for themselves well here in the mid game, mid to late, Yeah. with that early game going bad. Coast has stretched this pretty well. I expected it to be a much swifter and more decisive victory by TSM. Really, that five-man Katarina alt slash Spinning blades and all the <laughs> all the death, and all the lotuses, the death. sinister steel. The oh, the yeah, the, the, the spin. Yep. Yeah. Give a little bit of movement speed and a heck of a lot of damage. We'll see what they can do on this turret. It's already down to half health. That's going to be some quick procs. I already have the triforce onto wild turtle, so structures aren't a problem. Not whatsoever. This Baron buff is going to try and make a lot of pushing for the rest of TSM. No one can deal with Yerkson in a one v one either, which is. Fantastic news for TSM. Six turrets to two. Means they can continue this. And there goes Bjergsen. Is that going to get him? Was fusing. Oh, wow. That was like 800 some damage. That was a lot of death mark damage, but it was just enough to finish him off. And Bjergsen was hardly touched. So crazy. Bjergsen not having any trouble going in and out. You can still see him quickly communicating with the team on the microphones. You see them all now, both teams telling each other, we need to get back, and one needs to go forward. The culling comes out of Nintendo. He tries to sidestep it in with the strafe, but he can't get the damage. It's gonna be Ot or Dyrus coming up with that one. 14 to six of the kills is the first inhibitor goes down in the game, and they're gonna keep going. Yeah, once Bjergsen deletes the AD carry, the then Baron up team with that 15,000 gold advantage is gonna take the inhibitors no problem. TSM brute forcing their way through Coast Base. Once TSM gets an advantage, they do not let it go. Methodically working every entrance to a fight that they needed to, and the entrance to the base of Coast right now. Inhibitor number three, Daydreaming still dead. Coast almost just has to run straight into a Baron team. It would surely be the end of them, but I feel like it's the end of them if they don't. A full team of five, can't even deter Tyrus off a turret. Got him again. They go to the back line, Shifter very low, trying to get the kills out. Wild Turtles also bleeding, almost dead right now, but the kills finally start coming in. It's the mid three from Nintendo to Wiz Fusion, and they're looking at the Nexus turrets now, Jack. Daydream is the only one that keeps alive. Another fantastic, decisive win by TSM. 30 minutes in, Dyrus just eating two turrets for breakfast. 
There goes TSM, another win. Nexus is going to fall. It looks like Coast will not find any victories against TSM in their head-to-heads as TSM grabs another win.